All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Chip Eichelberger. How are you doing, Chip? Excellent. Great to talk to you, John. Excellent. And where are you today, Chip? Uh, beautiful Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Excellent. I'm here in uh, San Diego, North County, San Diego. That's where I lived for many years, right there. Cardiff oh. by the sea oh. and uh, Moonlight Beach and Encinitas, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just up the road from that, just on the border of Encinitas here. So, yeah, sure. great part of the world. Um, but Knoxville, Tennessee is a nice part of the world, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so what I wanted to talk to Chip about, because Chip's all about motivation and energy and energizing people. And I thought, okay, for our audience... Uh, of sales professionals, uh, a lot of everybody's in Q4 right now. And some of you maybe had had a great year, maybe some of you haven't had such a great year. And for those who are maybe um, struggling a little right now, I wanted to talk to Chip about how can we help get you energized and motivated to really push on and end the year with a bang rather than a whimper? Well, I guess the first place is just belief. I mean, a lot of people shut down last couple months of the year because they just assume nobody wants to hear from you. Right. Um, you know, that's like one of the classic sales strategies is how do you get a hold of people? Well, call them early, call them late. <laughs> They're not expecting you. So how can you get out there and add value, be a little bit unique? Because sales is a pipeline business. It's the same thing for me. I mean, my sales pipeline is a little slower because there's not as many conventions I'm speaking at November, December. So it's doing the little things every day to set myself up for first quarter. So, I mean, a couple things you can do, obviously, is just, just have some clear standards of activity. What are you going to do? Um, it's easy to get busy and not really do anything that's going to move the pipeline forward. So what are you doing in terms of contacting past clients? Uh, most people forget about past clients. They're really going towards the next business deal. So what can you do to set yourself up every day? And it's, it's you know, if you track something, it's much more likely to happen. Even going in each day with a game plan written down to say, I need to contact X number of new clients and tracking as you go. It could be contacting other prospects. It could be contacting past clients for referrals. It could be, I'm big on testimonials. If you go to my website at getswitchedon.com, one of the reasons I've done this for 24 years is I've documented my success. I mean, I've got, I take pictures with my clients. I get testimonial quotes. I've got over a hundred of those on my website. I've got over 40 videos. So Try to do the little things to make your job easier. So in recapping, number one, standards of activity. What do you want to accomplish every day? Everybody's business model is a little different, mm -hmm. but most people need to stay in touch and call their past clients more effectively. Most can call and ask for referrals. And when you get a referral, reward it in a unique way. Mm -hmm. Most people can go back with an added value piece, not, hey, is it time to buy from me again? But here's some things I found that can help you. Um, but I think really going into the fourth quarter is, is a big piece with your mindset. What do you believe? If you've already told yourself that, oh, it's difficult, nobody wants to talk with me, it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, I, no, I, I agree. And I think you touched on a couple of great uh, points there. I think one of the things that people often do is, right, I mean, you say go back and contact, uh, you know, your old customers and all of that. You know, often you'll say that and the people, you know, somebody will say, well, yeah, I've done that. I've tried that. And and you have to sort of explain to them, yes, but maybe that wasn't the right moment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so that so you know you should keep on doing that. And I love the idea of testimonials because mostly people say, okay, well the company does the testimonials. But to your point, there's nothing stopping individual salespeople from getting their own testimonials, is there? Oh, it's, it, it's essential. Every time I get a lead from a company, um, I always uh, do a little research on the industry that I'm going to go immediately to my bank of testimonials and I'm going to send them, hey, I know you're evaluating other speakers. Um, let me share with you why people book me. And it just documents mm -hmm. it's not me singing my praises. Mm -hmm. It's my clients. Um, that's very, very important to be able to do that. Most of the business models I talk to, John, I, I don't care what it is. Very few are very good at getting testimonials. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, or or even just a quality video in ninety seconds telling yeah. who you are and what you do. I mean, very very important to be able to do that. And my my uh, business philosophy of marketing comes from an unlikely source. I love the quote from Jerry Garcia, "Grateful Dead." Right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, had one minor top forty hit, yet had the Deadheads would give up their life and tattoo right. the Dead <laughs> logo, and you know, run the uh, uh, VW uh, bus around <laughs> the country. But Jerry Garcia said, you don't have to be considered the best of the best. 
You just want to be considered the only one who does what you do. Right. So how, how can you carve out that niche that's going to be unique with your unique selling proposition in your client's head so when they're looking for that, they go to you? Yeah. And how about, you know, at this, as we said, at, at this time of the year, it is a bit of a mindset. And if you are going into Q4 and you're all down because you're way behind in your quote and all that, if you don't start, if you don't do something to pick yourself up, right, it's not just going to affect Q4, is it? That's going to carry into the next yeah. year. That's if you have, still have a job, if you miss your right, quota, right. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, I, what can you do from an energy standpoint? Well, number one, if you can see this, I think I've got this stand-up desk right here. Uh -huh. You can see it right yep. there. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing is just the bomb. Getting a stand-up desk for energy. But I think in sales, you know, it, 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 it's showtime. Mm -hmm. um, all the research shows when's the best time to exercise. Obviously, in the morning. So, if you're somebody who doesn't exercise right now, I, I encourage you to shake up your routine. Get up a little earlier. Get in there. Get some aerobic. Uh, one of the things I learned from my years with Tony Robbins, I was there with him for five mm -hmm. and a half years. That's why I was in North County, San mm -hmm. Diego with, yeah. with Tony. But you know, the quality of your life is the quality of your health and your vitality, and the quality of your health is the quality of your cells. How much oxygen your cells are getting dictates your health. Aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise means exercise with oxygen. So mm -hmm. get up a little bit earlier that morning, get a sweat, get your heart rate up, do a little bit of basic weight training. Um, there's a recipe for a smoothie recipe, John, that is awesome. People can Google it. Get switched on smoothie. Mm -hmm. That will start your day with a little bit more energy and hit the ground running with a little bit of momentum. Um, you know, it's the old uh, metaphor of some people are a thermometer, some people are a thermostat. Mm -hmm. Some people are on a roll after that deal closes. Okay, now I'm going to go make it happen. <laughs> Other people have the ability to self-regulate because the problem is when something doesn't happen and something doesn't close, temperature down, energy mm -hmm. down, not doing anything. So um, being able to regulate, and it's a mindset in terms of what's your strategy before you go to bed. What are you reading? Mm -hmm. What are you listening to? What do you want to get better? Um, what I teach people is I call it the 4% solution. 4% of 24 hours is one hour a day. Right. So you got 168 hours a week, seven out of 168, you got to get on your A game. So what do you mm -hmm. read? What do you listen? When you're driving around, driving university, I mean, back in the day, I'm 57 years old. I mean, if you wanted a great tape series, you got to go to Nightingale Conant or somebody and pay right. 60 or hundred bucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now it's all free, which yeah. is good, bad, because if you don't pay anything for it, people don't value it as much. So if, if you make a decision, hey, I'm going to listen to at least a half an hour positive material a day. I'm going to read 15 minutes of something positive before I go to bed. I'm going to take the time to visualize my success that next day. I'm going to visualize it going the way I want to. I'm going to go in with a committed plan. I'm going to hold myself accountable in maybe three areas that really mm -hmm. make a difference for me and start tracking that and, and get a little bit of energy about what you're doing and have a mm -hmm. little bit for fun. Uh, I think people will forgive anything except a lack of passion. Yeah. You want to check your energy level, go call your own voicemail right now on your <laughs> cell phone or your landline and listen to it. Is yeah. it hi? This is Chip. <laughs> Nobody wants to do business with you that way. Mm -hmm. What are you doing uniquely? I'll show you something that's really cool that I've been doing. Um, I've been sending out, people probably um, saw them on the Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. It's the, uh, here it is, the Love Pop cards. Have you seen these? No, no, it happened. No. If you go to Love Pop, now this, this is a card. You can see it. Looks like a oh, yeah, uh, yeah. black lab, right? Mm -hmm. But if you open it up, Oh, it popped. Yes, no, I, I tell a lie. It's I have a, seen them, yes. Okay. I mean, you can probably get them. You're probably getting them for about 10 bucks. and mm -hmm. there's a wide variety. There's a really cool thank you one that has, like, you can put a Starbucks a gift card in it. Right. Um, I've been trying to do something different like that to stand out in people's mind. Mm -hmm. um, in my business, it's you, go ahead. You have a question? No, I was, go I, no I was going to say just um, – just on some of the things you said there, I think it's becoming even more critical, as you said, about how you start your day, how you finish your day and the positivity. Because I, you know, I was doing a, a talk recently where I was just saying, OK, if you've got something important going on today, right, you've got an important meeting. The last thing you want to do in the morning is check your social media, right? Because guess what? Your ex-wife just bought a Lamborghini, right? Yeah. That's going to make you feel fantastic today, isn't it, right? That's going to make you feel really good. Um, or you switch on the news and whatever side of the political spectrum, yeah. you're going to find something that annoys you. So to your yeah. point is why don't you look for positive things to keep you in a positive frame of mind? Because the world will wait. The news will wait for you. Yeah, well, 
law of association is you're going to become like the people and the information you choose to associate with. Mm -hmm. So how can you consciously say, I'm going, you know, a number one, two ways to look at it. What are you going to read? What are you going to listen to? What are you going to watch? That's going to nourish your mindset and move you forward a little bit every day. And it's, uh, it's the old line, you know, Zig Ziglar, my late friend, the late Zig Ziglar said, some people have stinking thinking Mm -hmm. and they got to get a checkup from the neck up. What do you need to stop watching? What do you need to stop listening to? Who do you need to stop hanging around? For some right. of you, I mean, let's talk to the people in their 20s who are watching this. A, number one, mm-hmm. there's a reason you're watching this. Mm-hmm. It says something about you. If you are watching this, you want to get better. If you're not losing friends in your 20s, you're not moving ahead. Right. There's some people you've got to leave behind the wayside because they're going to drag you down. Um, I've been, I started with Tony Robbins in 1988. Before that, my first job out of college, I was a sportswear rep, all commissioned. I was all Mm -hmm. commissioned for Tony. I've been speaking professionally now for 26 years or something like that. I've I've never had a base salary, so I know Mm -hmm. what you do. And it can be draining when things aren't going well. So you've got to have consistent things you do to find a way to put yourself on a roll. Waiting for something to put you on a roll is very detrimental Mm -hmm. in sales. So you've got to have things that are rock solid you rely on. And if you know that there's activities you can do to fill your pipeline and you're getting them done every time, every day, you got to have the faith Mm -hmm. that those correct actions will lead to the people coming with you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's also that point is, as as we said earlier, is you see timing in sales is often everything, right? Yeah. So if you keep doing things consistently, eventually you'll hit every, you'll hit something at the right time. If you do things sporadically then you know the chances of you hitting something at the perfect time is a lot less yes absolutely why it's like the power of that cool love pop note Mm -hmm. or a unique thank you card or you know i'm a big believer when you have a gatekeeper you want to get to a decision maker Mm -hmm. uh i always send a a a number one when i get the i get you on the phone john hey i just want to let you know katrina or whatever (laughs) whatever her name was she's fantastic what a gold you have in her. I'll send her a handwritten thank you card. Hey, fantastic. Thank you for the opportunity to get a hold of John today. You have a bright future ahead of you. I mean, that little note, I tell you, the next time I call, golden. It makes yeah, a difference. Yeah. So you're so, getting you're getting say, you're getting put through, right? You're getting put through, but it's 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 planting the seeds mm-hmm. consistently of right. doing the little things the you know my, my mentor Jim Rohn, R O H N, if there are people it's it, Every time I speak in an audience of, you know, let's say it's 500 people, I got five people's hand go up, <laughs> know who Jim Rohn is. It just kills me. Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins' mentor, who he right. worked with. Mm-hmm. Go, go, go listen to Jim Rohn. And he said, you know, one of the key things, he, it's R O H N, by the way, he lives on YouTube. Um, do the things the failures won't do. Most people don't take the time to prepare for a sales call like they could. Right. If they're bringing in a specialist from their company, they don't take the time to write up, here's where we are in the sales cycle. Here's who this person is. Here's who the hot buttons are. Here's what they're afraid of. They're not taking the time to brief their team. They're not getting there a little bit early. They don't, you know, I'm a big believer. Go in the darn uh, fire uh, area there. It, it, you know, like, uh, let's say mm-hmm. there's a doorway there where you can go in in the stairwell there. Right. Get pumped up. Bring yeah, it. I yeah. mean, when you walk in the door, it is showtime. You got to mm-hmm. bring your best self there. Most salespeople, and I'm a big believer um, in recording yourself. Mm-hmm. They don't go oh, in yeah. with their cell phone to a client and say, you know what, John, I've called John here for three years. I want to make sure I'm listening as well as I possibly can. Would you mind if I just take my cell phone and I just record this for personal use? Mm-hmm. Most clients are going to say, hey, no problem. And instead of just taking such notes, you go back and listen to it. I would wager 10%, 15% at the most of the people we're talking to right now have ever done a presentation, got a little tripod, put their cell phone on it, Mm -hmm. and gone back to record themselves actually delivering their pitch. Yeah. It's never happened. No, and I think you may. I think you make a fantastic point here, and it's it's uh, it's something that I I preach as well because I guarantee you're right. If you take if we took a random thousand salespeople or hundred salespeople, don't matter, and we opened their calendars right now, we would see all their customer meetings and follow up stuff, you know, all on it. But very few of them would we see any prep time put yeah. put aside actually marked on the calendar, I have to prep for this meeting. And like you said, how many of them, how many times do they, do you show up at the last minute or five minutes beforehand? And now you're like, you know, busy, like rooting around in your bag, getting everything ready. And you're not, you're not in the right frame of mind, right? Well, 
motion creates emotion. There's, mm-hmm. there's not a great athlete who, I mean, you know, got the World Series on right now. Mm-hmm. Watch the guys in the batter's box. Mm-hmm. Watch them before they hit. They have a ritual mental, a ritualistic way they're getting ready before the game. Every single pitcher is visualizing, facing that specific specific batter, knows their tendencies are. You know, they got the plate into nine different areas. They mm-hmm. know, okay, this guy hits me here, but not here. They're visualizing that. Every great free throw shooter at the free throw line. I happen to be a passionate golfer. That's the love of my life is playing great golf. And I tell you, 90% of it is getting a clear idea of what you want to do, breathing well, visualizing it, having a routine locked in on the driving range. When you get out there, it's easy. It's mm-hmm. the same thing in sales. If you want to be consistent, it's, I, I think a routine is essential. And just mm-hmm. to recap, um, most of the people I talk to, Achilles heel, is um, they don't have the energy they want. Right. They don't have the vitality they want. Um, it's the stamina to fight through. Cause I mean, mm-hmm. Hey, sales is not easy. No Whole commission is not easy. You got to bring your best. And if you're not in good physical shape and you're not feeling good about yourself, stress level goes up. Yeah. No, to the, to that point, I mean, if you're, if, if, as you say, I mean, if your energy is going down and down and down throughout the day, and then by the time you finish and maybe even had a good day, you're just slumping on the couch in the evening with a, with your beverage of choice and feeling sorry yeah. for your feeling sorry for yourself that's only going to exacerbate over time, right? Absolutely. I mean, success breeds success and failure brings Mm -hmm. failure. So, you know, motion creates emotion. So what can you do before you start your day? What can you do during the day? I mean, don't just assume your energy Mm -hmm. level. I I, I talk about, um, let me see if I can show it to you right here. People can go to my website in the document library. You can download something like this. But on the card I have there, it says this. And you see it, it says, where am I now? Zero to 10. Right. Mm-hmm. And so before you have a big call, you got to ask yourself, zero's comatose, 10, I'm at my best. <laughs> so if you're at a two, you got to stand up. You got to move. I mean, most <laughs> professionals have a, you know, have a good headset and they're uh-huh. standing up when they make their phone mm-hmm. calls anyway. Before you have a presentation, before you walk in the door, have you taken the time? I mean, it seems silly, but once you get into the routine of getting clear on your outcome in advance, committing to an advance, I mean – be honest, there's a lot of salespeople who are weak closers. Yeah. They're not very assumptive. Um, I, I think you got to be elegantly assumptive throughout the sale, but some people don't ask for the sale. They don't mm-hmm. ask for the business. You got to visualize yourself doing that. You got to build that confidence up. That's why it's so essential for people to record themselves and listen. Mm-hmm. I, I do uh, occasional training where a team will bring me in where they have salespeople who have to stand up and deliver what they do. Right. And I'll videotape them for a day, day and a half and coach them how to open, how to close, how to tell stories, how to overcome objections. And most people have never seen themselves on videotape. It is eye-opening mm-hmm. because you think you have more intonation. You think you're pausing. Yep. You think you're listening. You think you're asking good questions. Then you go back in and you listen to your pitch and it's you talking about you, 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 you. <laughs> it's not you talking about the customer and mm-hmm. their issues and their problems. And you got a freaking PowerPoint slide deck that's so boring. <laughs> it's all about you, 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 not about the customer. And until you see it, you don't get it. I, I'm yeah. training people and they think, oh, I've got really good energy. Then you go back and watch the videotape and they're talking like this all the way. <laughs> and until your brain sees it or hears it, it, it just doesn't connect. And you go, whoa, hold it. What? Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I love that because we are, let's face it, we are fantastic fantastic at deluding ourselves right i mean we can <laughs> and and we can come out and go wow you know i really i really killed it in there and as you said the people are there going well that was boring <laughs> yeah well, one uh, of my friends not too far from you in rancho santa fe marshall goldsmith oh i know i know marshall guy, yeah great guy mm-hmm. and he talks about when he pulls an audience let's say it's a big group of salespeople, and he has them rank themselves let's say in 10 areas compared to their peers and he says typically results are always the same 70 percent of the people will rank themselves in the top 10% of what they do. <laughs> Somebody's delusional. Not, yeah. 70% can't be in the top 10%. So that's why I, I challenge people. I say, you know, how much better are you at what you do mm-hmm. than you were three years ago? Right. Five years ago. Are, are, are you better? Are you still making the same mistakes as you did three, four, five years ago? Mm-hmm. Um you know, when we're talking about getting back to why you called me was about finishing out the yeah. fourth quarter strong, have people think back. W- was there a fourth quarter? Was there a November? Was there a December? You put a huge deal to bed by the end of the year? Mm-hmm. There probably was. Right. So, so let's look back at that. So a lot of it is, uh, you know, belief is just a feeling of certainty. And you got to have a feeling of certainty that if you start doing the right things, you can get better results. But what I challenge people to do is bring your best you to the game. 
Mm-hmm. And the best gift you can give other people is taking great care of you. Right. Uh, no, I, I think that's fantastic. And I think if you if you bring your best you to the game, whatever the outcome, at least you can kind of feel that you put your best foot forward, right? And you gave it all. And maybe this just maybe it was just a timing issue. Maybe it was just whatever. But it will eventually happen for you if you keep turning up with the best version of yourself. Well, absolutely. And two things I would say. Number one, when something doesn't go your way, um, analyze it. What do I need to do better? Mm-hmm. And, you know, a word we used to use <laughs> with Tony was next. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just let it go. Let um, it go. I've been, I've gotten so much business over the years when, um, cause my business is, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's so funny. People, professional speakers, they have mm-hmm. this, uh, vision that there's a circuit <laughs> and we just right. run around and trade <laughs> places. Oh, it's your turn, yeah, my yeah. turn, your turn. It's, yeah, it's not like enough. that folks. Nah. Okay. It's very, very competitive. Mm-hmm. So I have a system when I contact somebody, Hey, maybe what I do doesn't really fit with their theme this year. Mm-hmm. But I use my calendar to go back and drip on those people X number of months before the next decision is. Right. I might send them a unique article or send them a cool card just to let them know because most people don't follow up very well. Mm-hmm. They just don't. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have a system to put people into the funnel and know when to how to contact them because, like you said, persistence wins out, knowing when to do it. and. There is luck involved sometimes. Too. Sure, absolutely. And as we know, the harder you work, the luckier you get, right? There you go, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, Chip, this has been fantastic. Uh, we're bumping up against the end of our time, but I just okay. want to give you a chance to uh, tell everybody a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you. Well, sure. I mean, my, my business model is pretty simple. I mean, most companies call on me. Um, everybody out here has been to one of your sales conventions. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of them suck. I mean, they're not very good. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of energy. There's too much information. The inf- the, the breaks are too short. Yeah. What I've customized myself in doing is uh, a workshop style. My belief mm-hmm. is people aren't dying for another speech. They're dying for engagement. So yeah. I'm one of the few who does the research in advance and does the interviews. I prepare a customized handout where it's more like a workshop, mm-hmm. getting people really clear on where they are, where the gaps are, gap analysis, what's truly important, visioning, game planning, mindset, and how to bring your best you. So typically I'm doing that opening the convention or closing it. Um, when we were with Tony, some people know we did the firewalk experience. Right. Mm-hmm. Very tough to set up. I don't do the firewalk. <laughs> The the, the 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 city permit you have to yeah, have doesn't sure. work, but uh, do a lot of team building stuff with breaking boards and the breaking barriers piece. So Excellent. if people are out there and they're interested and they say, hey, my last convention could use a guy like that, um, my website's getswitchedon.com. Email is chip at getswitchedon.com. Love to help you. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to go to my website, you want that smoothie recipe, or uh, uh, I've got a great energy schedule. It goes up on the mirror in your bathroom to track your workouts religiously. I've done that for 27 years. It works. Uh, email me. I'll get that to you too. Excellent. Listen, thanks, uh, Chip. This is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thank you all for joining us for this great Expert Insight interview. Thanks, Chip. This has been... Hey, you're welcome, I mean, we, we could have gone on for hours, I can tell. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Call me back. I got a lot of material. No worries, brother.